Hi, I'm Helen. And I'm Sarah. And this is the Squiggly Careers Podcast, a weekly podcast where we dive into the ins and outs and ups and downs of careers and share some ideas for action, some tools for you to try out so you can hopefully have a bit more confidence, clarity and control over your career development. And every one of our episodes is supported with lots of resources to help you take action. So whether you just listen to this today or you want to learn a bit more, we've got pod sheets, they're one page summaries you can download to reflect and share with your team maybe, that might be you could do we've got pod plus that's a weekly conversation where you can talk with other like-minded squiggly learners or you can sign up for pod mail which comes out every tuesday and it pulls all the resources together for you into one place all the links to that stuff are in the show notes if you ever can't find it just email us we're helen and sarah at squigglycareers.com and so today we're talking about how to turn hard moments into helpful learning (laughs) And I suspect if you ever wondered whether we sometimes get podcast topics from what's happening in our weeks, (laughs) uh, this is a really good clue. I think you could probably just listen every week of the year and just be like, what's going on in Sarah and Helen's world? What's happening behind the squiggly (laughs) scenes this week? (laughs) And you you would know because we would be like, oh, this has been hard. There must be a podcast topic in there. Um, And it turns out after a a bit of research and discussion, there absolutely is. So what do we mean by hard moments? Because actually we've taken a bit of time to think a bit about this. And also the contrast between hard moments and knotty moments, which you might have heard us talk about in the context of squiggly careers before. So when we think about knotty moments, we consider them to be bigger than the day to day. They sort of go beyond what's happening in your week. So knotty moments in a squiggly career, big moments of change and uncertainty, which you may or may not be in control of. So, you know, the classic restructure redundancy one, maybe you want to change career, maybe you've got a difficult manager. So those sort of knotty Coming moments. back after maternity leave. Yeah, 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 stuff, yeah. <laughs> not hard to imagine what those might be. What we're talking about today are hard moments, which is when in the moment that was hard you know those uh it happens during your day to day maybe you expected it maybe you didn't but i bet you have a conversation about it afterwards you know Mm. it's the whatsapp message it's the quick phone call to your boss or to someone you get on really well with in your team going this felt hard or this was hard i think you very rarely keep those hard moments to yourself because sort of in the moment they feel almost quite visceral you're like oh that was really tough that was difficult And so examples of hard moments might be a disagreement that happens in a meeting, maybe something that you'd not expected. So maybe different expectations from a project. Maybe somebody was difficult who you hadn't expected to be. Helen, a couple of specific examples. (laughs) You want want the specifics. I had one recently, a hard moment (laughs) uh, when I was recording a podcast interview with somebody and the conversation went in a very different direction to the one I had prepared for or was anticipating (laughs) and I couldn't escape it. So it was like a hard moment I couldn't, well, I felt like I couldn't get out of. And yeah, that that was really difficult. I've had other ones where I've had feedback that I wasn't expecting to get. So... I wasn't expecting that feedback. I didn't think it was going to happen then. So it was sort of like a double whammy of hardness. Sometimes making a mistake, you know, Mm -hmm. when you're like, you make a mistake in a moment and you're like, ah, that just wasn't how I wanted that to go. And yeah, multiple hard moments. What about you? Well, we had a hard moment together when we were delivering some career development recently for a group of people (laughs) on on a leadership programme. Oh, it's all coming back. Now it's coming back. (laughs) So we live draw in all of our sessions and all of our workshops and the tech had been working beautifully until about three quarters of the way through the day where suddenly the tech just stopped working for absolutely no rhyme or reason. No one could fix it. And, you know, we had to then work out what we were going to do very, very quickly. And that felt like a really hard moment because you've got, you know, all of these people with expectations and sort of waiting for what's coming next. And sort of everything has has suddenly died on you. So that was quite tough. So kind of a techie type one that definitely felt like a hard moment. We also had an example recently of someone in our team where they were put under pressure in a meeting to offer something for free that we would normally charge for. So again, they hadn't expected that. I think that felt really hard. You know, it feels quite uncomfortable. I don't think all hard moments 
are surprises. I do think sometimes you anticipate hard moments, but I think they are more likely to be unexpected than expected. Do you think? Mm. Yeah, I was, just, I was thinking about some more. You know, you're like, what are all the hard moments? You like the questions that you get in meetings. You know, sometimes like someone will give you a question, and you're like, yeah. that question is not. It doesn't feel like a genuine question. It's one that where someone is deliberately trying to sort of put <laughs> you on the spot or show you up. You know, those yeah. kind of ones as well. And again, that's unexpected. So when I'm reflecting on the ones that I've had they generally have been unexpected or unwelcomed. (laughs) (laughs) You're just not being very nice, is normally my my thought. And so I think, how do you feel after a hard moment? You often feel maybe disappointed in yourself. Mm. So because you hadn't expected something, maybe you don't respond or act in a way that you feel good about. You might feel frustrated. I often feel frustrated. When I was really thinking about this, I was like, oh, frustration was the main emotion that I feel either that maybe I'd not done something previously that I should have done or that I didn't deal with it differently you also might spiral so if you're like me this definitely happens so you make that hard moment bigger than it is so essentially you sort of take a moment in time and then you start to really overanalyze it let it take up loads of headspace I find with hard moments if I don't do something about them or address them quite quickly you know like they sort of permeate the rest of my day and the rest of my week and they sort of stay with me or you might feel quite defeatist this one I don't recognize as much you sort of I'm more likely to sort of spiral and get frustrated but when you look at the research around hard moments sometimes we then start to say to ourselves oh just like what's the point you know sort of actually it's giving up I think we mm-hmm. sometimes feel like oh we just we either want to give up or we feel like giving up I think as well I can almost get a bit sort of I don't know. I don't mean to do this and I don't like saying this, but almost like a bit blamey. My first reaction Definitely is... Definitely blamey. You know, like, yeah. Okay, good. good. That's just me. <laughs> but you know, like, oh, that was all about that person or that was just unfair or that just wasn't right. And I do not like that about myself at all. And I also don't think it's particularly helpful. Mm. It's, much, it's much easier to sort of look inward, which is what we're going to talk about and think about what... Because I can't control. You can't control somebody's desire to put you on the spot. You can't control somebody wanting to give you feedback that will happen but I do sometimes go oh that was that person you know my I almost get a bit spiky about the person and I kind of go oh that's not nice and it's not particularly helpful I can sometimes see that sometimes in my responses to those situations so how would we like to feel about these (laughs) hard moments Not like that. (laughs) Uh, there are two things I think we're sort of aiming for here in terms of what's our job to do we want to recognize that it's hard but feel proud of how we handled that hard moment and also reflect on what we learn so it might be that bit easier the next time around I think that's the kind of the name of the game here so we've got a couple of coach yourself questions for you to think through so that you can I guess get to the insights Sarah and I've got to about like what are some of these moments and how do they make us feel and we'll put all these in the pod sheet for you if you're thinking I really want to spend some time reflecting on them so the first one is what was the hardest moment of my week Number two, what are two reasons why that moment felt difficult? Number three, how often can I spot that hard moment happening in my work? That might be daily or weekly. Number four, what am I already doing well that's helping me navigate the hard moments at work? And five, what one word do I want to use to describe myself after a hard moment? So as an example there, one thing that I would like to say is instead of snipey and blamey, I'd like <laughs> just just calm. I'd, I just aim for just calm. Calm and in control would be brilliant. What what would your one word be? Open. I found that last coach stuff question useful. I mean, I'm saying that as somebody who wrote it. <laughs> so I'm giving myself credit for writing the question. But I, I was like, oh, that's a useful way of thinking about almost probably how you respond like almost like what gets in your way and like almost what you are trying to do differently. Because I think, you know, you talked about you get spiky. Mm. I think I get closed. Mm. Um, So I sort of get frustrated and closed. And then, you know, so I sort of want to be the opposite to that. I want to be open. What I quite like about this word is like calm, controlled and open. And they're a bit boring, aren't they? But they're fine. Like They were kind of like boring words, but they're quite, <laughs> they feel quite doable. Like staying open, staying calm, staying in control. They feel like, well... That feels like a doable way that I can respond. As long as I've got a bit, some skills, some ideas for action of how to do it, that feels quite manageable. That's true. I suppose it it feels realistic, which is always Mm. good. And it does feel like you say something that you can do. 
So mm. it's like you're not you're not relying on other people, which I think is always helpful. So we've got four ideas for how you can turn those hard moments into helpful learning. And as we go through, we've certainly found it helpful as we were sort of testing out these ideas to maybe think about a hard moment that you've experienced quite recently and then how you could apply each of these ideas to that hard moment just to then kind of almost like think about sort of what happens and then kind of what you might do at each stage of a hard moment. So the first idea for action we're calling the four A's and this is when you're in that hard moment how can you increase your awareness to a point where you can hopefully do something helpful. So the first A is acknowledge. So when you're in that hard moment, if you can just have almost like enough capacity and space to say to yourself, this feels hard because it will just help you to understand and appreciate, oh, okay, it's okay. This is a hard moment. So I guess for me, it's okay that sometimes a podcast interview is hard like it doesn't not everyone is going to be with a friend who basically (laughs) you know asks you the nice questions that actually sometimes people's job is to ask you a question you've not been asked before so they can get insights that other people haven't heard and it's okay if I find that difficult because I've not had that question before like that's kind of all okay for them and for me as a situation yeah and I was thinking about the times that I have sort of have hard moments I might be saying to myself oh this is a hard moment because this person has approached this project very differently to perhaps how I would have done it. You know, almost just like mm. just just acknowledging that or this is not what I'd expected. This is a hard moment because this is not what I'd expected and that's it. Then I think you have a, a sort of level of acceptance that you, you're going to move to quite quickly. I think all of these things happen within about 30 seconds, to be honest. You usually can't change that hard moment in the here and now, but you can accept that it's sort of, happening and then really think about how you respond to it so it's very rare that you sort of can just go oh well I'm going to get rid of that person or I'm going to stop this situation like you know in the middle of it because usually you're sort of in it you're in the midst of it so then the sort of third and the fourth a's are adapt and act so asking yourself what can I do right now is a useful question because the answer might genuinely be nothing and that's okay. But almost just by having gone through that thought process of like, this is a hard moment. I'm accepting it's a hard moment. What can I do right now? Maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's actually to ask a question. Maybe it is just to kind of slow down for a second. Maybe it's just to think about, you know, being curious or thinking back actually to that word that Helen and I just described. That's probably what I think I'll start to try and do a bit more is think, what can I do right now? I might end that now with, what can I do right now to be really open? Because I've said open is that word. So Helen might say, what can I do now to stay calm? So maybe ending that question and connecting it to the word that you came up with in that coach self question might just then help to influence a small action that you can take in the here and now that just helps you to sort of show up in that hard moment in a way that you'll feel proud of and you'll feel good about. I really like that connecting it to the one word thing because I did try in this situation. I did try <laughs> to adapt. I remember I thought, well, I'll put, I am feel like I'm being interrogated. So what I'll do, this is me being snipey. This is not very good. I, was like, I like so snipey, I'll, Helen. I'll, I'll interrogate it. you back. So I, I mean, I'm not very snipey, really. So I think no, I just you're really said, not. That's why I, enjoy I, it. I think I just said something like, oh, I'd love to get your perspective on this. I mean, that's about as, that's about as snipey as I got. And then the person didn't even give me a perspective. They just asked me another question. I was like, oh, Amazing. Right, that, that, that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but I do like the idea of, you know, that one word that having it in mind, like calm would have probably just been me breathing before I responded, you know, just mm. maybe pausing a little bit more rather than kind of rushing in to respond or just staying sort of more neutral with my tone. So and I guess also you're a naturally high energy, energetic person your pace is quite speedy, you know, your brain works super fast. And so in these hard moments, in some ways, you know, that's going to feel slightly counterintuitive to you. Because like you say, calm might just be slowing down, Mm. more pauses, more silence in a conversation, and sort of knowing that that's okay, because that's going to help you to stay calm. Mm. And just like just practicing that you might come away going, 
okay, I didn't in I don't think you enjoy, I don't think many people no. relish hard moments, but then you do come away going, I didn't enjoy it, but I do feel like I sort of showed up in the right way. I sort of used the tools and tactics that helped me to get through the hard moment. Well, when I just think about that one in particular, I'm going to use a horse analogy. I don't know why. I've done a long time since I've been near a horse. But I felt like a bit like the reins had been pulled away from me. You know, like right. so you're riding a horse with no reins. And I'm like, I don't know where this is going. I'm not in control of it. And I think just that one word of going, well, how do I want to come across? And what could I do now that would give me that? It gives you at least one of the reins back. So at least you've got, you well, might be going around in circles with it. But, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, you're at least not going to, you know, I don't know where this horse's analogy is going. But you kind of... That was the idea that came into my mind when I was sort of listening to you and just reflecting on it with that particular situation for me. So our second idea for action is about getting some perspective and we're calling this one perspective playback. And the risk here is that when you come away from whatever that situation that you've been in is, like, you know, the meeting, the conversation, the feedback you weren't expecting, that hard time for you, the risk is you can kind of get a bit stuck in your own story. There's what Sarah was saying about, like, you know, you might sort of magnify that particularly hard moment in your mind and it all just becomes, you know, a bit sticky and a bit hard to get through. And what can really help if that is happening is to ask for somebody else's perspective on the situation that you've been in. Now, they might not have been there. So it's not like you can say, oh, what did you see? What did you hear? Because maybe that was just between you and one other person. But what you can do is play back your experience. So the meeting, the conversation, whatever it was for you, and then ask them some questions that can help you to get more of a perspective. And it's very useful if this is somebody that knows you quite well or works with you quite closely because then their perspective will probably be a bit more relevant. And so the sort of things that you might want to ask here, so let's imagine I'm playing back that interview or that feedback I wasn't expecting to Sarah. What I would then do, having played back that experience, is ask her, listening to me, what are your first thoughts? And then I would listen and that might be different to my first thoughts. Sarah might bring in some insight that she's got about me because she's worked with me for a while, maybe a bit of empathy. Like I would have found that hard too. You know, you're not alone in that, all that kind of stuff. So you kind of, you know, listen and just take that on board. And then the second question that you could ask, which can help you is what do you think I should do now? Because if you're feeling a bit stuck in a situation, it can be hard to see your way through it. But that person who's got perspective might also have some clarity. And so just asking them, what do you think I should do now might help to sort of move you on from that moment yeah and I think what's interesting about this is we said at the start of the podcast often hard moments you do end up sharing with someone else because essentially you want to either complain or vent or do those kind of things and I think that's absolutely fine you know maybe that's to your partner or to your friend or whatever but I think what we're saying here is actually how important it is to share the hard moment so you don't want to keep them to yourself but I think this idea helps you to do it in a way that is more constructive and useful for you I still think you know go downstairs and do the venting with your partner or <laughs> or whatsapp your someone in your family and just be like this is a nightmare I think that's okay because it sort of gets it out of your system but what I think it doesn't do is necessarily help you to move forward or to help you to you know get that perspective that actually somebody else can give you so it's just recognizing that if you've had that hard moment that making the space to actually share it with someone else is a real priority because it's actually what can stop it you know like I talked about it permeates the rest of my week Mm. as soon as I talk to you about a hard moment it sort of puts a full stop after it because I've gone okay I've got some other perspective I'm now clear about the action I'm going to take I take that action And then actually you do feel like you've sort of got some momentum to move on to the next thing and you're not sort of still got that sort of niggle in your mind about that kind of hard moment that's sort of staying with you. So now with your hard moment, you've hopefully coped a bit better using those A's in the moment. You've then got a different perspective that's helped you to think about what you might do. Idea for action three is then to choose your ending. So this is after the hard moment, thinking about, what do I do now? And if the outcome hasn't been what you wanted, which it probably hasn't, if it's been a hard moment, you can then actually start to think about, well, how do I regain a bit of control? How can I take a small action that just helps me to feel like I've reflected on that hard moment, I've learned from it, and I've sort of taken ownership for it? So for example, that person in our team that we described where they'd had 
you know, a hard moment with somebody basically asking us to do work for free, you know, rather than charge for something. What then she might have done is just sort of left that and just thought, oh, that's a really hard conversation. I didn't really enjoy that. I didn't feel like I showed up very well in that conversation. That could have been the ending. That's sort of almost like ending one. Or an alternative ending might be for us to then go back to that organisation, thank them for the conversation and the fact that they're interested in the work that we do, and just reiterate, okay, this is what we offer, this is how much we charge for it. To me, that feels like a confident ending, and it feels like one that you've sort of chosen rather than sort of one that you've let happen to you. So I think just know that you've got options when it comes to how a hard moment ends, and just because you know something hasn't gone well in the moment doesn't mean that you can't then still take back a bit of control I think. So what did you do Helen with the podcast interview? Did you choose your ending or would you now choose your hen- ending with the benefit of hindsight? No I definitely I, I did choose my ending. I, I thought well how can we all learn? I often find that to be a good one like how can my experience help other people is often a way that <laughs> on a podcast episode for example (laughs) here's my ending everyone no but uh, it could be for the team like if I had a a hard conversation with someone about pricing I'd be like okay let's come up with a one pager with our pricing which communicates it really clearly so that you can send that afterwards and then that feels like I'm going that's that is something we didn't have before this hard moment happened and therefore it is helpful so whether it is I mean in our world it would be something like you know a new statistic that we'd found to support a message that we were trying to communicate or you know a podcast that could help other people they're often the things that I use sometimes I've even thanked somebody yeah you know I think this that sounds I really say, weird say thank you yeah because like you've been in a situation and you're like well that felt hard and that felt difficult and what I could do now is sort of write off this relationship mm. I don't find that very helpful as a way of working to sort of write off relationships so I would rather go back to the person be that a manager or whoever it would be and just say I've reflected on our conversation yesterday I did find it quite difficult in the moment but actually I've learned a lot from it these are a couple of things that I'm going to do differently as a result and I just wanted to thank you and they might have been being difficult you know there might have been quite a lot that was on them but I can't control them and sometimes me kind of almost like being the bigger person Mm. and saying thank you I just feel better about myself and better about that situation when I end it like that. And our last idea for action is all about rehearsing your response. So what Sarah and I thought about when we were reflecting on our hard moments is that often something similar is probably likely to happen again. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, just being honest, everybody, that feedback you weren't expecting or that person that was difficult in a meeting or whatever it was, it's probably not going to be the last time that something like that happens. So as well as choosing your ending for that particular moment, what can be really useful is to feel confident about how you would respond differently next time. And rehearsing your response is one way you, you almost build muscle or I guess it's more like mental memory so that when you're in that situation again you're like oh I could do this differently I I was talking to Sarah about it I was like it's a bit like first aid I think you know you get taught first aid and then there's something that you know sticks in your head so that if you ever are in a situation you know how you would help a person out and this is really about helping you out so for example if I was thinking about feedback that I wasn't expecting what I might do is just think about okay so next time that happens in a meeting what would I do differently maybe I would have a statement that I would say maybe the thank you okay thank you I appreciate your insights I'd like to come back to you with my reflections later on but like saying that statement out loud it sort of familiarizes myself with it so that I know that next time I don't have to panic I don't have to get defensive I don't have to rush to respond I can just pick up that statement and say it and it might be a you know that you've got if I was in a podcast interview or something I might say okay next time somebody takes me down a very argumentative direction I'm not going to try to defend my position which is probably what I did previously I'm going to say actually can we just press pause for a moment on this conversation and just talk about the outcome that you're looking to get you know even just one sentence like that and saying it makes you feel comfortable and confident so that if you are in that situation you know where you're going to go with it and it's just about rehearsing the response so that you're ready for it next time and as we said they often are unexpected I think the more I think about these it's very hard to know they're going to happen other than maybe you know sometimes if you have someone that you find it hard to work with 
you like oh every time I like have a conversation with that person or a meeting with that person maybe you can anticipate hard moments a bit more then but most of the time I think you don't know they're coming but one of the things that I've realized is when you do start to spot oh this is a hard moment you know you've sort of done that acknowledge and accept you're so much more likely to be able to sort of respond in a way that you feel good about Mm. so one of the things that I noticed is that I always found it hard when let's say we're doing a workshop about career development with people and unexpectedly somebody really disagrees with what we're saying and that doesn't happen very often so you don't sort of expect it most of the time people are very open and they're learning and they're sort of going with it and even if maybe they're not sure they're giving you the benefit of the doubt which is great but occasionally you get that person who says I don't agree with this or I think this is wrong and previously I would have a sort of found that frustrating because I'd have been like okay I haven't got time for this I need to move on to whatever I need to talk about next and also I would almost take it very personally I'd be like, oh, this is a reflection on me. You think I don't know what I'm doing here, essentially. So you're not disagreeing with the idea, you're disagreeing with me. And when I then started to think, okay, well, if I want to be open in those moments, what would I do? I just figured out, oh, I would just be intrigued. And then I would invite the rest of the group to share their perspective. And that for me, whether it's a workshop or a meeting or a project or a conversation with someone in our team, that intrigue and invite, you know, you sort of talked about mm. having a shortcut for first aid works so well for me in so many different scenarios. So I'm like, well, be be intrigued because that's being open. So, you know, I might say, oh, that's so interesting. I'd not thought of that. How did you get to that point of view? Or, oh, that's so interesting. Tell me a bit more about that. Or like, why you think that doesn't work? So just like be intrigued and then not feel like it's about sort of just about me. It's like actually think about invite other people in the meeting or invite other people in our team or invite other people in that workshop to then say oh, okay so that's a different point of view you know what's everybody else's response to that and again I'm being really open to well maybe there's something I can learn maybe there's something we can learn and this is not about me sort of having to prove myself this is about just being open and what's so funny is that then having learned that technique and being able to apply it in so many different hard moments it then just helps you to sort of move forward from that hard moment in the here and now, you know, because it is a hard, it's a really hard Mm. thing to do when something is difficult, it is hard. But in that here and now, I know that I sort of, I'm not saying I thrive, I think I cope much better than I did before. And then I think you can then just think, okay, well, that was hard. And afterwards, would I still be coming to you and going, oh, really hard moment in today's workshop. Somebody said that they, I don't know, massively disagreed with squiggly careers and they think the only successful people, they want the ladder, yeah. (laughs) You know, so I would still be doing that to get the playback perspective that we talked about. But I think the likelihood of me then in the here and now kind of coping with that difficulty is so much better because of that rehearsing your response. And that is a really good example of one where I probably learned that about four years ago. It doesn't happen that often, but I rehearsed it and then I practiced it. I practice and practice and practice. So you don't have, I don't think you need that many things actually in your first aid kit, Mm. but just a couple of things like that, that feel useful for you and also feel realistic. You know, like it's useful and I realistically think I can do that and I know I can and I've practiced it enough and then I go, great. That's basically all I need to do. And I don't put pressure on myself to do anything beyond that. So quick recap then of those ideas for action. So the first one was to remember the four A's, acknowledge, accept, adapt and act. The second one was perspective playback. The third one was choose your ending. And the fourth one was rehearse your response. So we hope that that is going to be helpful for you when you are in a hard time, which is kind of inevitable for all of us. But we just want to sort of be there by your side when you're squiggling through that moment. And as we said right at the start, those will be summarised for you in the pod sheet. So I think as well, if you're a manager or a mentor, it's likely someone might come to you to talk about a hard time they're going through. And so this could be a useful structure to support them with too so maybe sending the pod sheet their way could be a helpful thing you could do so thank you so much for listening and we're back with you again soon bye for now bye everyone